streams in the desert. How do you react? A lot of times determines how you act in a normal situation. In other words, when you're confronted with something, do you automatically have a knee-jerk response that you have certain set routines that you go through that say, somebody hits you on the right cheek, you automatically turn the left and off from the other, or do you strike back? <laughs> you see, it's not as easily to program sometimes spiritual responses as opposed to physical reactions. The same thing is true about life, is that we find ourselves lots of times in situations and circumstances where life is going to happen. God says, I have set certain things in process of development that if you heed my warnings and do my thing, then guess what? You know, I can help you to avoid them and give you the strength to endure some of them and to change you and make you able to handle others of them. But if you don't do what I say, then you're going to smack right into circumstances that are going to cause you maybe kind of a dramatic learning process. Mm or a joyful learning process because you know that God is bringing you to an eventual end and that you can trust Him for what He's bringing you through today. For me, I always see it as God showing me, teaching me, learning from it, and developing in a way that He chooses, not that I might pick for myself. In Streams in the Desert, my father is the husbandman. A husbandman is a vine dresser, a person that takes care of the farm, so to speak. It is comforting to think of trouble, in whatever form it may come to us, as a heavenly messenger, bringing us something from God. It, in its earthly aspect, it may seem harmful, even destructive, but in its spiritual outworking, it yields blessing. Many of the richest blessings which have come down to us from the past are the fruit of sorrow or pain. We should never forget that redemption, the world's greatest blessing there is, is the fruit of the world's greatest sorrow. In every time of sharp pruning, when the knife is deep and the pain is sore, it is unspeakable comfort to read, My Father is the Husband. Dr. Vincent tells of a being a great hothouse where luscious clusters of grapes are hanging on every side. The owner said, when my new gardener came, he said he would have nothing to do with these vines unless he could cut them clean down to the stock, and he did. And we had no grapes for two years, but this is the result. There is rich suggestiveness in this interpretation of the pruning process as we apply it to the Christian life. Pruning seems to be destroying the vine. The gardener appears to be cutting it all away. But he looks to the future and knows that the final outcome will be the enrichment of its life and greater abundance of fruit. There are blessings we can never have unless we are ready to pay the price of pain. There is no way to reach them save through suffering. Recently in my life, as I mentioned in an earlier devotional, my wife and I had gone on a vacation, just got back and... We were delivering a car that we had rented to go on vacation with because our car is old and beat up and decrepit and, <laughs> well, it's gone through a lot. And we just really couldn't afford a new one, not in this economy right now. So what we decided was to just rent a car. So we rented the car and we knew that sometime this summer we're going to have to buy an old used car. And so we went on vacation as the Lord led us and we were blessed out of our minds and I'll make a video about it sooner or later but the joy that we had was tempered by for my wife at first because as we were finally getting the car all ready to turn into the the rental agency after we got on our vacation that our old car blew up <laughs> she was driving it it literally Probably threw a, uh, or threw a, probably blew a head gasket, or worse. And because there are so many issues with it that we had been Mickey Mousing and kind of like just temporarily trying to get by without it, and it was so bad that we knew that it was time to go. And that, one person says, oh, that's a tragedy. 
But another person says, no, that's a pruning. You see, because what better thing may come along will be to our advantage in thanking God for and allowing us to do things that we could not do in our older car. So, I look forward to, and I rejoiced in, the fact that we already knew we were getting rid of the car, and that now it had been moved up, though we weren't necessarily prepared for it. We knew that God could take care of it, because we can always find a solution to our immediate issue. But the reality of the long-term fruit that God wants to bring out in your life, as well as mine, is cause for rejoicing. Because once you know God well enough, you know, even when you blow it and you ask for forgiveness, you feel like you don't deserve it, and you get even more so that way the older you get as a Christian, that God still loves you. He still takes care of you. He still does as He promised, and He will bring you to that place of salvation where He says, you are my creation. I formed you and made you and brought you, and now I present you to my Father with exceeding joy because I've completed the work in you. So allow sometimes those circumstances in your life today, though they seem ouch, er, ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, one, one, bing, bang. They seem so overwhelming. Allow them to be a pruning process because even our country has been pruned and there will be a better fruit for what God is doing in causing the development of discipline and uh, cutting off of certain things in order to bring about the joy, the peace, the love, and the fruit of God's Spirit so that you can endure anything that comes your way, even death. You just walk right through it and pass into heaven and enjoy it. Because yes, not only is Jesus coming again, he's coming for you.